Hi, my name is Reese, and in this video, I want to cover five key questions that you should think through before investing in a battery system. The main focus here is for larger battery systems that can power most things in your house. For this video, I'm going to be using an off-the-shelf solution as my example, like this one has 240 volt output natively, though after going through the five questions, you might find that you need something different or maybe even something smaller. So first off, what issue are you trying to solve? I'd say there are two main reasons why you would get batteries for your house, for a power outage or to save money or maybe for both. Now for a power outage, do you want an automatic system or do you want a manual system? Here's a demonstration of an automatic system. I'm gonna simulate a power outage, keep an eye on the lights. Do you notice how they flickered for just a second? That was the transfer from the grid to the battery, which happens in milliseconds. So if you want an automatic system, you can get something like that. Or maybe you don't mind, you notice that the power goes out and you have to go get extension cords to plug in or use a generator inlet box if you have one. As I mentioned, I'm gonna be using this battery system for my examples. This is a brand new power station from Anchor Solex, the F3800 Plus. Now you don't have to get this one, but they are sponsoring this video. And I do think this is a great out of the box solution because you can just get it. And it's one of the very few power stations that can output 240 volts natively and you can also hook it into your home's electrical system and as you saw it can do that automatic power transfer. But besides being ready for a power outage you can also use a battery to save money. Basically you're using the energy in the battery when electric rates are high and you can recharge it when rates are low or if you combine that with solar you can save money too. But basically you are leveraging the battery to save on electric costs. And this is a legitimate calculation you should do because the lithium iron phosphate technology that's in a lot of these battery systems, they last a long time. For example, this one, the F3800 Plus is rated for at least 3000 full charge cycles. So you can use it daily without worry. And if you have a chance to get a discount, like you're in the US, and I believe that I'm not an accountant, you can still get the 30% off a battery that has over three kilowatt hours of storage. So this one here has 3.84 kilowatt hours of storage and would qualify. So do the math with your rates and the net cost of a battery and it might actually save you money in the long run and then give you power backup when needed. So second question, what do you want to run and for how long during a power outage? This is probably the trickiest and most important question to answer. And I say tricky because it depends on your situation. Like what is your heating situation? How do you heat your hot water? What are your priorities during a power outage? Because realistically you can't run everything and you have to pick. And then you have to pick how long do you want to run those things when there's an outage. For example, how long do you want your refrigerator and some other critical loads to run for during an outage? I've got a few here as samples. Here's an induction cooktop, coffee maker, router, light, charging my phone and laptop, and obviously running the refrigerator. So when you're choosing a battery and inverter or an all-in-one system like this, you wanna consider capacity, how long can it run all the things for, and power output, can it run all the things at the same time or any one thing individually? All right, let me walk you through an example of how to get a good guess on these values. So I have the refrigerator running, I have all these things plugged in that I mentioned. And so what you wanna do is guess at how much each of these, how much power is it gonna use, and then how long do we need in watt hours for it to run 12 hours? So I'm gonna guess I want these things to run for 12 hours and then figure out how much battery power that I need. Now, a lot of things, you can figure out how much power they use if you have one of these watt hour meters. Since I've already gone through and figured out a good guess on these, I'm not gonna use those. So if we wanna know how much battery to get that can last 12 hours with all these items, we need to add up the power. So I know my fridge uses 100 watts or so on average, because I have that watt meter, and then we're gonna multiply that by 12. It's gonna give us 1200 watt hours. I will also assume I want the light router and modem to work for the entire 12 hours too, and I can multiply their wattage times 12 to get the total watt hours. But I don't expect the other items to use power the whole time. Uh, the coffee maker, I just ran it, and I made about four or five cups of coffee and it took about six minutes, and while it was running, used about 1100 watts. And because I only plan to make coffee once, the total watt hours is for running six minutes, which is a tenth of an hour. So that makes the total 110 watt hours. The cooktop here, I boiled four cups of water to say you're gonna make pasta. That took about seven minutes. 
and used 1400 watts. And let's round that up to 30 minutes because you're gonna have let that simmer, let that pasta cook. And let's say you wanna plan on cooking two meals over the 12 hours, so that means one hour at 1400 watts. And so that's gonna make the math easy, 1400 watt hours. For the laptop and the phone, they plug in with USB-C, right, particularly on this unit. But for these 12 hours, we're gonna say we're gonna charge it from zero to 100% one time. And my MacBook has a battery of 100 watt hours and the phone is 15 watt hours. We get a total of 3,485 watt hours. Now you can't just get a battery with this number on it for capacity because you have to account for the AC inverter power loss, the power that it takes to convert from DC of the batteries to AC output. And typically I ballpark that at around 15% loss. And ironically, when I measured the inverter loss on the F3800 plus, I'll put the results right here, it was about 15% but we'll take that as our example. 3840 is the capacity of 30 F3800 plus, take off 15% for a usable capacity of 3,264 watt hours. You can see this number is a little lower than this number, but we did make some assumptions. So if you did use this power station for the 12 hours with these things, you're gonna get pretty close. So you're gonna to wanna to go through this process yourself and maybe you'll have different things like a well pump or the power to run your gas furnace, etc. Figure those things out, take off the AC efficiency 15% and then go with this number. Now, if you need more capacity than that, then you're gonna be thinking about adding extra batteries. If you are getting a system like this, adding extra capacity is pretty easy. It's very plug and play. You just plug the battery in, that's it. That's all you have to do and it sits right on top of here. Each of these expansion batteries is in, it doubles the capacity, so it's another 3,840 watt hours, and you can have six of these batteries per main unit. So besides capacity, you also need to think about AC power needs. So you need to consider surge power and continuous power. So on this one, we'll just look at these outlets here. This can output 6,000 watts of continuous power. So you need to make sure that all the loads that you add up don't need more than whatever your inverter can output 6,000 watts in this case. And then you also need to consider the surge power. For example, anything with a compressor in it will need surge power. My fridge, for example, needs about 2000 watts of surge power for a fraction of a second to start it before going down to its running wattage. If you have an AC unit, you can look up something called the LRA value on a sticker to get an idea of what the surge value is. Let me know if you have any more questions about this. So for the third question, you wanna consider how will the battery or batteries get recharged? There's basically three main ways. There's the DC input, like with solar panels, obviously from the power grid, or maybe there's an emergency and you wanna use a fuel generator to recharge the batteries. If you watch me, you know that solar is one of my favorite ways to recharge batteries, and it can extend the runtime if there's a power outage. So if you're using a battery system like the F3800 Plus or a solar controller, you wanna look and see what the solar input values are. As an example, let me show you the two ratings on these different power stations. This is the original F3800 and this is the new one, the F3800 Plus. Using solar will work differently on these two stations because of the voltage limitations. For example, the original one had a 60 volt limit and they got feedback and increased that to 165 volts on the new version. So if you have a lot of solar panels and your solar controller only has a 60 volt limit, it could mean that your setup might get a little bit more complicated. For example, I have these solar panels out here. They're 405 watts each. They are from Anchor, but you can get any ones you want. But I wanna draw your attention to these four here in the front. I put those in series and you can see on my meter, it measures about 148 volts. And I only need one set of wires to go from this small array over to the battery unit. But with a 60 volt limit, I would need to wire the panels in parallel because even two panels in series would be over the 60 volt limit and require more wires. So if you're going to add solar panels to your system, pay attention to the highest voltage rating on your solar controller or battery system. That's gonna tell you how many solar panels you can put in series. Obviously you need to know the voltage on each solar panel and you add them up when they're in series. On the F3800 Plus, it has two ports that can handle 1600 watts of solar each for a total of 3200 watts. You also wanna consider if you're recharging by the power grid, can it input 120 volts only, which most of these battery units can do, that's this plug right here, or can it input at 240 volts? The new F3800 Plus is one of the few that can input 240 volts through this port right here and you can use the app to change the amount that you want to bring in so you can use any 240 volt source that you want so one of the last considerations with recharging batteries is if you're in an extended power outage can you recharge it with propane or gas generator and can it input 240 volts to be able to recharge quickly so like i said the old f3800 doesn't have that ability but this one does and so if you get this adapter 
you have this 240 volt plug where you can plug it right into here. So here's an example of it in action. Instead of a gas generator, I'm using the F3800. It's plugged into the side. It is outputting 3600 watts. And then it's going through here into here. And then it's a little higher than that because there's still some solar uh, being inputted on the side. But if you get a battery system and you want it to charge with a fuel generator, say a 240 volt source, make sure you think through that. Uh, but this one, I'm using a battery, but that could easily just be another fuel generator. So the fourth question to think through is how are the batteries going to connect into your home's electrical system? So this is my main service panel. And a few ways you can do it. You can do it with a branded hardware solution like what I have here. So this is the home power panel. So this device talks directly to this, which is plugged into a breaker panel. And it actually does something very neat. It back feeds the power to my main panel. Uh, but I made other videos about that if you want to check them out. But here I'm inputting about 500 watts of solar, outputting over 5,000 watts to power my entire house, including the, uh, the backup load center, which is right here. So you can do that. You can also use a generator inlet box to connect to a backup load center. Or of course you can just use extension cords and come right out of the side, either with the 240 volt output or these 120 volt outputs. And I should say the ones here on the side are heavy, the UPS feature on them. So if the power were to go out, they would switch over in milliseconds to providing power from the battery uh, to those AC outlets. Now, if you are going to use a generator in that box, that is that manual transfer because you're going to have to plug in here and then plug into your battery system. Most of them take 240 volt input because it uses 120 on both bus bars of your breaker panel. And this is the, uh, the older one. You can see it had this style type of plug, 240 volt plug, and they replaced it with this RV style plug. This is a 120 volt plug, but you can get an adapter and still get 6,000 watts out of this if you need this style plug, say for your RV or something. So the last question is, can you save money with a battery or batteries? So for me, when I first installed the solar system at my house, I did not integrate batteries because our utility didn't offer time of use rates. So the really only the reason to have a battery was for battery backup. But now things are different and time of use rates are offered in many places. And so if you haven't looked at that yet, take a look and see what your utility is offering. It can be pretty significant. Like for example, in California, there are places that have 60 cents per kilowatt hour during the day charges and 30 cents at night. And so you could add up all those savings if you charge your batteries at night, use them during the day, for example. The Anchor Solix system isn't the only one that can do automatic load shifting, but it is one of the more affordable ones and one that can backfeed power only to local loads. To get it integrated in, you'll need at least the home power panel and either the original or the newer F3800 model. The F3800 Plus is brand new and it has those nice upgrades and features. Check out the video description for the latest updates, deals, or coupons I can find. And if you want to learn more details on how I've integrated batteries into my house, you can check out this video over here.